I'm Manova Grung, a PhD candidate at Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, and I'm from Kathmandu, Nepal. Before coming to Yale, I was at, in Colorado at the University of Colorado, Denver, doing my major in Geography and Ge GIS, Geographic Information System. Following that, I did a lot of work in community-based environment health in Denver and also did a project in Tanzania in relation to malaria and climate change. Uh, being born in Kathmandu and Nepal, it has really given me this opportunity to really look at how this place is changing, right? Like a lot of um, population centers in Asia, Nepal, especially Kathmandu, is rapidly urbanizing. And yes, it has a lot of benefits to that, but then there has been a lot of problems associated with it, and one of them is air pollution. And um, being there, growing there, I have been able to see a lot of visible signs of air pollution, uh, ranging from the gray haze over the valley during winter time, people now walking everywhere with masks on their faces. And seeing all these and being an environment student and wanting to do something back home really made me think like, why not go and look into this problem of air pollution? And this started my work in masters with my traffic police project. The traffic police project in 2009 was looking into personal exposure for both traffic police and indoor office workers in Kathmandu Valley at different locations and proximity to roads. Uh, we measured a particulate uh, PM 2.5, uh, which is particulate matter with aerodynamics diameter less than 2.5 micrometers. Uh, we saw very high level of exposure for all our participants, especially traffic police, given that they stand in the middle of the road throughout their working hours. For them, on average, it was almost as high as 50 micrograms per meter cube, but then hourly averages would go as high as 500 micrograms per meter cube. And we have to remember that the WHO guideline is only 25 micrograms per meter cube. After my master's project, I was then interested to know is like what has been done so far in Kathmandu, Nepal, in terms of air pollution and health. So I looked through whatever studies that has been done, did a systematic review on it, and found that there has been very limited work done in for Kathmandu, Nepal. But but even those limited work has shown that there is a really high levels of air pollution in this region, and we really need to do studies in this region. But then also I want to. Uh, uh, talk about is also how, how important it is to do studies in this region uh, because a lot of times people might question is like oh there have been a lot of studies done in western countries and we know the relation between air pollution and health so why do we have to do one more study in uh, Kathmandu Nepal but then we have to think about is like places like Kathmandu Nepal have very high levels of air pollution such that the the dose response relationship that that was developed for low pollution in western countries might not be applicable for this area the pollution mixtures can be different because of the various different sources that is present the exposure to the people can be different just given that people have different lifestyle and culture and finally the health effect can be very different because we have different baseline health status, different socioeconomic status, different access to health uh, health facilities, making it very important to do studies in Kathmandu, Nepal. So my PhD dissertation focuses firstly on looking into the uh, health effect of air pollution by using hospital admission data. And the second project focuses on looking into traffic exposure, given that traffic is is the main source of air pollution for Kathmandu. So the second project will help form a framework also for future epidemiological studies because it will allow to look into where are the hotspots of exposure in the valley, what are the factors like season, how does that influence exposure to the people, and uh, also look into how does the exposure vary by different subpopulation, how much is the exposure for school children, is that determined by where a school is located, uh, by the where a school is located in terms of proximity to road or the neighborhood that the school is in. The big reason why we want to study air pollution in Nepal is because of the high air pollution and because it is a very understudied region. At the same time, whenever I'm doing my work, at the back of my head, I'm always thinking about how do I take this information, how can we bring it to use because just doing research, research does not end by just completing and writing a paper. So I'm always thinking about that, about how we bring that to policy. So something with my PhD dissertation that I'm looking forward to doing is also 
looking at different ways to disseminate the information, not through the formal ways of journal and conference proceedings, but also making some kind of an informal document for government and non-government organizations, and also working with different like partners that I have now in Kathmandu uh, of how can we use this information for increasing awareness, because ultimately you want to take this information back to the public and hopefully bring about a change. The challenges with uh, implementing uh, policies and coming up different ways of mitigating air pollution in Kathmandu, Nepal is firstly, uh, you cannot see air pollution. So it becomes very difficult to actually convince people on the, of the effects of air pollution, uh, both acute and chronic. Especially with chronic, of chronic effects, you have the cardiovascular effect, the re respiratory effect, the low birth effect, and it decreases the lifespan of people. But it becomes very difficult to convince people that something that you cannot see has all these effects on your health. Also, for a place like Kathmandu, we have various other problems like political, environmental, which makes it very difficult to focus on one thing and come up with a solution. The study, the Nepal government had a regulatory ambient monitoring from 2003 to 2007 and it's a very good data set. We have daily me measures of PM10, particulate matter with aerodynamic diameter less than 10 micrometer. That is the biggest data that we have for Kathmandu. But since 2007, the, the monitoring has been stopped. And one of the ways that I'm making use of this data set is uh, using it to understand the health effect. So it's a retrospective study using this regulatory monitoring data from 2003 to 2007, but and at the same time collecting hospital data, hospital admission data from 2003 to 2007. So we are trying to use these data set to estimate what is the effect of air pollution, but at the same time answering important questions like, uh, how does the effect of air pollution change by different subpopulation? What is the role of socioeconomic status on determining the vulnerability of the population? Which regions in the valley are more susceptible to higher exposure and ultimately uh, greater health effect? And also in the end to look into the effect estimate, how does that compare to other parts of the world? Especially for Kathmandu, I think we need to think in terms of having very cost-effective ways of decreasing air pollution. Something that we can do right now is remove old vehicles, uh, 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 have better road maintenance, uh, encourage public transportation, uh, make sure that we reinforce all the regulations that we have present, and also maybe start doing the uh, ambient monitoring again, because that allows us to see if the standards are being followed, what the air quality is like. In terms of air pollution for Asia, uh, it, it has a large proportion of the global health burden. And, but if you look at what studies have been done to relate air pollution to health, it's mainly done in Western countries and the few studies that has been done in Asia has been mainly focused in more developed countries of East Asia. While South and Southeast Asia, where there is rapid urbanization happening, which means rapid deterioration of air quality, increasing number of people living in areas with high pollution areas has been largely underrepresented. For some, something that I'm trying to do with my work is also develop a research framework so that we are doing work in a cost-effective manner. Uh, we are using technology technologies which are very cost effective, um, at the same time using data that is readily available like census data, land use data towards understanding air pollution and health, such that by this work we are also forming a framework of how do we do research in areas with limited resources. At the same time I'm also exploring different research methods so that we form the uh, research methods that are applicable for areas similar to Nepal. So, in that way, I feel like, yes, we Nepal can come and become an example for other places on how we can understand air pollution and health and how we can mitigate that problem. <laughs>